<laughs> the history of hat pins and how women use them for self-defense is one of my favorite subjects. Now most of us when we think about self-defense tools you think of like mace or a taser. I for one am five feet tall. I'm, I'm very small. So ever since I started going out on my own I've always carried a pocket knife in my purse. Just in case. Because while I may only be as intimidating as a chipmunk, most people are going to think twice before they approach a chipmunk with a knife. But our sisters from the early 1900s had a much more creative idea. Around this time, very large flamboyant hats became very fashionable. There would be flowers and like whole scenes going on on top of their heads. Uh, some people even put real dead birds in them, which is a different, different topic, but they, they needed something to help keep them on their heads. And their solution was the hat pin! These suckers were legit. They were made of metal, they were 12 inches long, and they were super sharp. You know, to get through all the hair. Now around this same time, women started to go out on their own a lot more often instead of being chaperoned by other men. They were going to parties and clubs and big social events, and you know, wherever there's a crowd, there's gonna be a creep. And whenever one of these creeps got a little too frisky with somebody, they would just yank out one of their swords, basically, they had in their hats, and they'd jab them. For example, on the afternoon of May 28, 1903, Leody Blaker, a young Kansan touring New York City, boarded a Fifth Avenue stagecoach, which is like a bus, kind of, but with horses. The coach was crowded, and she noticed that he kept inching his way closer to her every time the coach jostled a bit, which she thought was weird. Soon he was touching her hip to hip, shoulder to shoulder, and then he lifted his arm and draped it across her lower back. Leody had enough! <laughs> She reached for her hat pin, nearly a foot long, and she plunged it into the meat of the man's arm. <laughs> he let out a terrible scream, and then he left the coach on the next stop. <laughs> My favorite part is her quote, He was such a nice looking old gentleman, I was sorry to hurt him. <laughs> and if New York women will tolerate mashing, Kansas girls will not. <laughs> That's right, you get him, Leody. <laughs> Now, as usual, when women start standing up for themselves, men get all dramatic about it, and they dubbed it Hat Pin Peril. I mean, look how dramatic this is. Here's a closer look at this mess. So here's a man is impaled with a giant hat pin, which that's that's not how it works. And look, look at the illustration of the hat pin with the skull on top, which is rad. I kind of want one, but come on. Elsa Lancaster, who played the Bride of Frankenstein, actually has a song about hat pins, and it's delightful, even if it's dark. 